I have noticed this with such persons. Very frequently such a woman will have one grandchild whom she particularly favors and that grandchild will become the object of her witchcraft and it's disastrous for the child. And there are many, many, many such situations in the United States. I meet man after man after man who can never become what God requires him to be in two areas, in his home and in the work of the Lord. He can be successful as the president of a bank, he can be an athlete, he can go to Vietnam and get decorated with medals. But there's two areas in which for some reason that he doesn't understand, he's inhibited, repressed and unable to develop. And I've met men in their 50s and 60s, extremely successful in the business world, who never really matru matured spiritually or emotionally because they were still tied to a mother's apron string. My personal conviction is that this is the greatest single problem that threatens the United States. And I also believe that the resolution of this problem will produce the greatest revolution this nation has ever known. Basically, and I hope you'll go on loving me, the United States is a woman-dominated nation. I have never, I've traveled widely and lived in many nations, I have never met any other nation in which was in any degree like that dominated by women. They say 80% of the capital of the nation is in the hands of women. This is partly through the laws of inheritance and so on. And this is not an attack on women. But for every 10 active women workers in the church, you're lucky to find one man. Is that right? The church and the home, the two areas of spiritual responsibility, in most cases are woman dominated. Now I don't say that in every case such a woman is a witch, but I do say that it's the power of witchcraft over this nation which is holding men down spiritually and putting women in positions of leadership for which they are not qualified and to which God did not appoint them. Furthermore, I do believe that witchcraft is the great national danger politically. As I, I'm a Britisher and I came to the United States and took United States citizenship. So I'm an American citizen by choice, which is more than most of you can say. <laughs> and I knew nothing of American history. As far as British are concerned, the pilgrims were dropouts. I mean, when they <laughs> made that mistake, that was the end. But I have become acquainted in the last few years with just a few of the background facts of, of American history. And I see this, two spiritual streams in this nation. One is a pure stream of the truth of God, such as no other nation outside of Israel has ever enjoyed. And the other is Satan's counterfeit and essentially it's witchcraft. And the two are in opposition and the destiny of this nation is settled by how those two influences work out. You're probably, I mean all Americans I suppose are aware that every 20 years since 1860 the president elected in the 20th year has died in office, usually in rather tragic circumstances. The first such president was Abraham Lincoln. And I think a tremendous amount turns around what happened with him. Now I'm a great admirer of Abraham Lincoln. I'm convinced he was a sincere, dedicated, committed Christian. I have a book which is called Shaping History Through Prayer and Fasting. And in that book, I have three presidential proclamations made by Abraham Lincoln calling the entire nation to a day of humiliation, prayer, and fasting. The statements he makes in those proclamations are amazing. One of the things he says is this, that nation only is happy whose God is the Lord. This is officially recorded in the statutes of the United States. I can give you from my book the volume and the number of the proclamation. Few Americans know that.
I've talked to many quite well-educated Americans, lawyers, doctors, they're not aware. Uh, in the history of this nation, four of your presidents proclaimed days of national humiliation, prayer, and fasting for the whole nation. And the language of those proclamations would do credit to most preachers.